Hi, my name is Roya Hakakian, and I've been asked to speak a little bit about my own recollections about growing up Jewish in revolutionary Iran in the years after the 1979 revolution. One particular memory that I went back to um, in my mind when um, I was offered this opportunity to talk about the past was uh, the words of a particular slogan that had been written on the walls of the synagogue and the Hebrew day school that I attended. The words were in quotes, we separate the affairs of our Jewish community with the affairs of the blood-sucking Zionists in Israel. These were the words that had been spoken by Ayatollah Khomeini, the cleric who led the 1979 revolution in Iran against the monarchy, against the Pahlavi dynasty. And I was always curious why why that line and why it needed to be on the walls of the synagogue. When I went back to um, think about all this and write my memoir, which is this, I found a group of uh, people, representatives, who had gone to visit with the Ayatollah after the February of 1979, which is when the revolution had taken place. And it turns out that immediately after the revolution succeeded, a few weeks later, a slew of executions took place in Iran. Among the top leadership that they had executed, which were primarily members of the military of the Shah, of the king uh, of Iran, there was also one Jewish industrialist. His name was Habib el Ghanian. And he had been primarily a very beloved figure. He, uh, he was a philanthropist. He had brought plastic to Iran. His major contribution had been a very, very um, large company that employed many people called Plasco. And the building was a high rise in one of the uh, busiest streets of Tehran. And he was not political. He gave to the left and he gave to the right and he um, he was just a businessman, um, but he was a leading businessman and he was a very well-known figure within the Jewish community. So when he was executed, um, the news sent shockwaves through the Iranian Jewish community. And that is when a very small group of uh, Jewish leaders decided that in order to allay the fears that the execution has in, had inspired within uh, the community, they should meet with the Ayatollah himself and hear from him what he intended to do with the Jewish community, whether this was going to be a hostile encounter and this execution was going to be the beginning of many executions of Jews to come, or it was just this one-off instance and they were going to uh, be safe in Iran. Uh, at the time, uh, a few weeks after the revolution, which was uh, the spring of 1979, the Ayatollah was uh, still residing at a seminary in what is the Vatican of Iran, uh, a place called Qom. So this small group, um, which I think were made of five people, uh, drove all the way from Tehran to Qom, uh, waited for him, for a very long time in, in sort of a waiting area that he had. And finally, we we're called in to get uh, a private audience with him, which surprisingly in those days, not too many people got. And this uh, um, small Jewish envoy, envoy from Tehran uh, got to meet him uh, privately. Uh, and for a very long time, in fact, uh, he gave them about 45 minutes. However, the talk he gave during that meeting, um, which was very much like a sermon, um, for the first 40 minutes had nothing to do with Jews or the Jewish community, which in fact, it made the group far more nervous than they had been upon their arrival. Um, and, and as they were growing ansier and ansier by the minute, um, finally, during the last two or three minutes, the Ayatollah uh, came to speak 
about the very issue that had brought the men to his home. And he said, well, you know, um, we understand that um, you are our own Jewish community. You have been here for a very long time. You have nothing to do with Israel. So we are not going to mix you up with Israel. Israel is our enemy, but you are the authentic um, Iranians who have been here for a couple of thousands of years and um, we like you and you're safe, but we continue to um, hold Israel accountable for its crimes. And, um, and at the end of that, he said, we separate the affairs of our own Jewish community from the affairs of the blood sucking Zionists in Israel. That single line is what the group, this envoy brought back from this meeting to Tehran. And the, this line was immediately painted on the walls of every synagogue as if to remind not just the generation that was listening at the time, but several generations thereafter, what the position of the founding figure of this Islamic Republic in Iran had been about the Jews, that they should not be mistaken with Israel, that they were not the blood-sucking Zionists, that whatever enmity Iran had, it was not with the Jews who lived there because they had always been there, but with those other people elsewhere far away. And I think it was in some ways um, while it seemed like a silly thing to do, it turned out to be a very important, almost like a blessing in a very strange and dark way uh, for the Jewish community because those words were never repeated and no one else ever had such a uh, formulated position on, on the Iranian Jewish community. There were so many backing and forthing but the fact that the, the founder of the Iranian revolution and the, the father of post-revolutionary nation had spoken those words and, and th thereby painted uh, all over town on every Jewish building made sure that this is who the Jews are and that everyone else should stay away and not uh, get us involved. And for better or worse, um, and no matter how anybody feels about it, this one line has been the policy of the Iranian government about the Jewish community for nearly 42 years. Thank you for listening.